and will be a little more uh, let's say formal today mathematically Okay, so a waveform that we're going to be using is going to be the fifty percent. cycle square wave. And because we're doing the Fourier expansion, we're saying that this square wave is repeating, you know, forever. And why this signal is so important is that there's something called a pulse with modulated digital to analog converter. And if you have a microcontroller, right, with a digital pin, it can send out digital signals, high and low. And what pulse with modulation is, is sometimes the width is longer. Oops. And sometimes the width is shorter. So this is the duty cycle. Here it's like almost three quarters. This is very short. This is kind of in the middle. And so, you know, how long you're on can be filtered. So this signal can be put into a DC which admittedly has a little bit of ripple in it. All right. But this is the final project in 110 lab. And we have to design this filter. Um, and understanding the Fourier expansion is actually really a great way to show how to design your filters. So, A naught which is the DC average, All right? Here's the formal equation. In this case, XT square, 50%, keep the math nice and easy. We're going from zero to one, All right? Well, we can see that between zero and t, uh, the period divided by two, the punk xt is one, everywhere else it's zero. So we can change our limits of integration to take that into account. and we get one half. Now, if I had a signal here that was T naught divided by 10, I'd get a DC average of a 10th. If I had this signal and it was on for three quarters of the time, I'd get three quarters. And if it was on 100% of the time, I'd get one. All right, let's find the 
a constants for n greater than one, right? So that's going to be two divided by the period. And I'm going to jump right into t naught divided by two rather than draw everything out. So it's going to be one cosine Oops, there's an N there. This, if I go through the integration, I get this. Now, sure, you can go through and start canceling things, but it's probably best just um, sometimes to look at this uh, to see what's going on, All right? And so sine 2 pi and t naught 0 equals 0 no matter what, All right? and sine 2 pi n, oops, right? Two's cancel, pi's cancel. So this is, no matter what n is, that will equal zero. And there's these rules with even and odd functions um that are listed in the book that can you know help you figure that out professor yes sir uh this integration form this is just all by definition right so That is the definition of a naught, right? A n, yeah, um, it is the definition. I just did take a shortcut where a n, you know, the definition Right, that's definition of an. That, that's just what it is. Okay. So whatever you're trying to find, what kind of cosines go into this, make up this function. So you just multiply, you're finding the average of the original function times a cosine. And if it's zero, well, then there's no cosine there. Does that help? Oops. A lot of chats. That's great the way you guys are helping each other out. So I, I'll go, I won't jump. So VN definition, we scale it. But this time we're finding the averages of the function sign uh, times sine. Again, it's 50%. This would change if you were doing a different um, form. 
I mean, a different duty cycle, right? If it was three quarters, you'd put three quarters. If it was a tenth, it's a tenth. Um, the 50% duty cycle does kind of work out nicely, though. So X of T in that regime is one. Oops, and there's an N there. And I'm just going to jump a little bit. So now this one's um, a little harder to see, um, and it will actually have a different relationship between um, n being even and n being odd. But let's uh, do first things first, right? Um, Cosine two n pi zero, right, will always equal one, right? Now, what about cosine two n pi t naught divided by two t naught? Well, we're left with this. Oops. Well, if if n is odd, right, we get minus one. If n is even, we get plus one. All right, so now let's go back to blue. All right, we have minus and I'm sorry, I should have been an in there. And I was anticipating something, so that shouldn't be there. So really, we have cosine 2n. So this is always minus one, right? But this is either plus one, even, minus one, odd, right? So this whole thing equals zero if n is even and it equals Yeah, I crossed that out. Thanks. So the coefficients, right? A naught, in this case, equal to half. A n's n greater than zero equals zero, b ends 
equal to n pi n and so on. So let's just think about that for a second. Is that let's let's just draw that. I mean, let's just write the equation. So xt expanded, right? It's going to equal to one half plus two pi. All right. And so this is, you know, the first harmonic, the third, and the fifth. So this is three times as fa faster than changing, three times faster than the first harmonic. This is changing five times faster. And then you can see how that constant is, is falling off. All right. And We never really said, right, that this ends. So this waveform, right, this is an infinite series, right? So even though this could be at a kilohertz, right, we're going to have something at one kilohertz, three, five and so on and so this is why we spend a lot of time talking about the bandwidth of or the gain bandwidth of a filter because if this is just the magnitude of a low pass filter ideally right if i'm putting in this square wave at a kilohertz i'm also putting what i'm putting in is a dc which is passed and then this sum of frequencies that goes on to infinity and so if the real op amp does something like this right all these infinite frequencies all these higher frequencies aren't really doing what you're supposed to be doing and so just selecting any old op amp will cause even a low pass filter not to operate correctly. And by putting in the square wave, you're putting in infinite frequencies. Now, sure, if, you know, n equal to 101, right, that'd be 2 divided by 101 pi, right? So it'd be very much smaller compared to the first harmonic, right? And so the effect is, is reduced, but it's still there. So I just want to make a nice plot.
And so um, two divided by pi is going to be 0 0.637, then the next one is 0.212, and, and so on. All right. Let's see how this stacks up to LT spice. So I want to do a 50% duty cycle. I'll keep the rise times very small. I'll be on for 0.5 of a milli, period of a milli. I'll simulate a few periods. And it doesn't look anything like it. But, excuse me, this is a numerical um, calculation. And also, we've done this on the log scale. We go to linear. But you can see we're centered at our kilohertz, three, five, seven, nine, and so on. We move this here and we're getting four hundred and fifty, right? But wait, we calculated oops, wrong one. We calculated point six three seven. Well this is like one of those gotchas, is that LT spice, right? These sine waves, these are all sine waves, right? It actually plots it in RMS. So if you want peak, right, you got to convert it back. And 636, and that's close enough. Okay. So that's pretty good. What this is, is Scopy, which we're going to be using. Um, we're going to be using it this week. Um, pretty much how we're, we're using it right now. All right, more to come. We have a signal generator. And let's... Just choose a sine wave. Um, okay. Kilohertz, full peak to peak. All right. It's already running. We can go to the oscilloscope. You can zoom in on it. Right. Um, now the spectrum analyzer is really the FFT. And it and it does take some time to calculate. And it's on VRR RMS. Let's go to peak. We have to zoom in. And I want to double check what I've done over here. So 
So this is one volt peak to peak. So the amplitude is 0.5. So now, oops, let's make the amplitude of one. All right. Just to keep everything the same. And I'm on peak. And it's at one kilohertz, almost straight up and down. Um, oops. And I'm just showing you some things is that you you kind of have to be careful. You kind of have to know where to look in order to um, get a good result here. Because this is the full, I'm, I'm looking at all the signals here. And this is jumping around so much that I, I can't really see what's going on. So if I'm looking for a kilohertz, I have to kind of zoom in to a kilohertz. And even here, right, on a logarithmic scale. You know, I'm starting to get there, right? But something to notice, right? I should be getting a V peak of one, but I'm not. And that has to do with a resolution. I'm trying to zoom in here. And if I zoom in close enough, I can get it to um, one volt, right? I can also, VRMS should be what, 0.7, oops. All right, but it's not quite. Um, even using the <coughs> okay, it can just be really hard to get the exact value here because you can see it's stepping over it. Right, it could. You know, we're looking for something right. that it only, this is spread out because of the way the numerical sim simulation is done, right? Our, uh, right, this is some mathematical thing that we've done and we're saying it only exists there, but what this is is one kilohertz, one point infinite number of zeros kilohertz, meaning it's perfectly centered there. If you look here, right, there's a finite resolution of the x-axis. And so we're kind of stepping over where we want to be. Now it doesn't mean, um, this is the nature of any kind of uh, measurement system like this, okay? And so you just have to be careful when you're interpreting the results. Like you might be thinking, um, so if you're trying to compare two things, like two different signals, you got to make sure that you're in the same frequency range. So let's... So if I set the free, this is a, you can do waveform math here as well. I can create a signal, right? There's a kilohertz. And just, now here's something. Sine T you would think wouldn't be scaled right, but the one kilohertz is in there. So if I come back to the sig, uh, spectrum analyzer, you can see that it's there, okay? 
and it does take time to calculate. That, that's why it wasn't there instantaneously. All right, but now, right, we can do sine squared, right, which gave us a DC offset and doubled our frequency. What does the spectrum analyzer say? Now, um, this doesn't do DC, okay? Just like uh, LT spice. And it disappeared. And I'm standing here. Why did it? Di Can anybody tell me why I can't see anything anymore? Yep, Sam, you are totally correct. So I'm not looking in the right place. Um, so a lot of good questions, and maybe I'll put that all into the lab manual. But this isn't a simulation. Um, I can't can't really show you what's going on, but. This signal generator is, this signal is being sent out of a measurement device and then fed right back in where I've just hooked the wires straight in, okay? So no, it's, it's this is a real measurement. It's just, um, there's no circuit in between, okay? But um, you can take data from this export it and put it into LT Spice. You can take data from LT Spice and import it here. Um, so anyway, let's do what Sam suggests and we should be able, given it enough, uh, there we go. Okay. So there, it doubled the frequency. Now, um, so let's do the first few things of the that that the expansion. So point five plus. 0.637 times sine t, the two pi n divided by t, it's all taken care of by this, okay? Plus um, two divided by three divided by 3.14. I don't know if it has a pi symbol times sine three times T. Put it in like that. That's curious. Oh. 
All right, I'm not going to play with it. But I know this works. It should work. All right. So this looks like, you know, a shape. It looks sinusoid. It looks like it's repeating, right? Um, Okay. Let's go back to the signal gener uh the spectrum analyzer. Now these should all have the same amplitude. All right, but they they don't and I think that's just a function of sampling. All right, I'm just gonna let that go. The thing though is these are the harmonics, right? And in a weird way, we're almost getting that square wave, okay? Hey, Tongue, that's great, man. Where'd you find that out? Oh, you tried it. Yeah. Now notice, that looks like a square wave, doesn't it? It's starting to, right? So we're adding this infinite sum, right? And then when we look, and thanks, Tong. Uh, I appreciate that. Okay, here we go. We've got something at a kilohertz, something at three and five, right? The rest of them aren't there, right? If I wanted the to go back, And yeah, there's a, there's something going on here. It's like some kind of artifact, but it really shouldn't be there, ideally. It's there, right? But it, like I said, it shouldn't be. We should be at one, three, five, seven. When I zoom out, it gets a little better. But notice how it's decreasing. And then it's actually kind of just flattening out, which um,
I think it's just the resolution of this. Okay. And if you wanted a If you wanted every harmonic, oops. There. This should have every harmonic there. Maybe it's easier to see on the logarithmic scale. Okay. So again, this looks like, um, just another simulation. It's, um, if I had a webcam on this computer, I could kind of show you the setup. But um, if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see some, some other things there, okay? And yep, it's entirely possible to use Python to calculate all of this. Um, If I change the duty cycle of a square wave, right, the average goes to, DC average goes to 0.25, and then here are the constants, and then the phase, though, changes, okay? And it's not every, there's something at frequency 1, 2, 3, but not 4 and 5, so it's, um, it's more complicated. But this code really, it's just an integration, right? I just integrate here with simp simp and then I just integrate the same thing and then scale it. And then at the end, I just substitute things, all right? No, I, I don't know. MATLAB probably has like one line, right? It's a commercial package. Um, I don't know. It's just a long time ago, a, a former student told me that industry was switching over to Python to, to automate testing. And I'm thinking this is like over 10 years ago. So I introduced it in class and then it kind of took off due to data science. And I also use it because anything you develop in class, right, you won't need a MATLAB license to run it at home or your company or, you know, if you decide to form a company based on your designs and, and everything you've done in school, you don't need to buy a MATLAB license, okay? Um, I, not to knock MATLAB, and by the way, the university has a floating license so that you, you can run MATLAB remotely, kind of like LT Spice if you 
look through the manual. You can go to a virtual server. It's there. And a lot of the, a lot of faculty in the EE department use MATLAB. So you're, you're going to leave, you're going to graduate knowing both. Okay. All right. So this is a periodic signal. It repeats forever. It's been repeating forever. Um, so we can use a Fourier expansion on it. All right, so um, we can just look at this and calculate the area and divide it by T naught, right? Um, because really all all's we're doing is finding averages. We're either finding the average of the signal or the signal times a cosine, or the signal times a sine, okay? So, you know, in this range, right, it's just T, All right? I could have a slope if I wanted, but um, it's really just T. So in this example, um, I actually need to add something. And I'm sorry, I forgot, is that this slope in order for this to be true, right, the slope has to be one over this because this is really, and I'm going to just 
add it back in. M, M, one over T naught, so that, otherwise what, ha if I went for a millisecond, right, I'd go up a milli, I'd go over a milli. It would really only work if, I'd only get to one if I went for one second. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, maybe I better do it out again. So M is squared. Substituting zero with zero, right? Okay. Okay. Sorry, my phone was ringing off the hook. So um, that's XT. We're finding um, cosine, right? The average of cosines. And let's just um, kind of redraw that a bit.
So is this function even or odd? Odd, right, Mike. So So cosine, is that even or odd, right? Even. And so the fact that this is, you know, purely odd, right, means that if I'm trying to find averages, and cosine is even, right, times x of t, well then, okay. So we can kind of in one step just get rid of all that, okay. Now, um, you can look that up. Or you can So really, I am integrating T times sine, right, two pi n divided by t naught times t. Oh, is this in the lab manual? Hmm. Yes and no. Um, I think I've shown you integrate from uh, when we were doing convolution, right? So learning how to, to do this, um, you know, you should be able to write the code that quickly. That's a bit of a mess.
Well, this is going to be zero no matter what, right? Because if T is zero, sine is zero. If T is T naught, it cancels and I have two pi N, and so it'll always be zero. So this all drops out. Let's say the slope is equal to one over T squared, uh, one over T. So let's just substitute that in. So now we have T, the period squared. Um, minus So at zero, right, this is going to be one no matter what, right? And then we'll just move to the side here. T0, the T0s cancel, and it's always going to be um, plus Just let me check that. Sorry, got a bit messy at the end. Oops. So here it's uh, the second half, right, divided by 2 pi n. So it came from here, came from here. Um, I'd forgotten to write it here.
Okay. I'm going to change it though. So the original question was this, right? Zero to one, 50% duty cycle. Well, now the question is this, right? This is a one kilohertz signal, right? And what if I want a five, kilohertz signal. Well, if I, we just got done taking the coefficients, right? And so, yeah, A, A naught, when it's scaled probably is going to be equal to a half, right? All the ANs are zero and then BN equals minus one over N pi. And what that means is I have something at a kilohertz, something at two, something at five, right? And it's gonna be one divided by five pi is gonna be that value. Now, uh, um, let me read. I know people got to go, but I'm going to finish this. Um, so these are the coefficients, okay? I'm going to finish this in the video and then you can watch the video if you got to go, all right? All right, so if I want to choose a filter to turn this into a DC signal, well, I'm gonna just kind of draw a low pass, right? That takes the DC, kind of gets rid of everything else, all right? It's just a hand drawing. I want a sinusoid of, that has an amplitude of one and a frequency at 500 kilohertz. Well, the original signal is at 100K. So I'm, I'm gonna say I want a five kilohertz signal. So this is what I want, right? So what gives me what I want? Oops. All I have to do is draw a band pass, right? Gets rid of everything else. And that's what I have, oops. But I want one volt. Right? So the thing is, is I can have H of S band pass, right? but then I need to multiply it by one over, I need to give it a gain, right? Because this, I want one out. This is a sine wave 
with an amplitude of 0.064, but I want, a, I want an amplitude of one. So I have to have a bandpass filter that does this, right? And if I were to do an asymptotic Bode plot, right? I'd put five kilohertz here. I'd have some spread, right? And then the gain would be one divided by 0.064, all right? And then that would, that's what I would do. Uh, if I wanted a, so if I wanted, I'm just scaling by 100 kilohertz. If I wanted one hertz, well, I would do a bandwidth here. Right. Let's say I wanted to get rid of the DC. Oops. I would do a high pass. Right. What if I wanted to get rid of everything? I wanted to keep everything except this. I would do a notch. Okay. Anyway, that's uh, just one minute over. Um, um, I had a little question. Oh, sure, sure. So you're going. This is you're going over number four in the homework nine, right? Well, so, uh, modified. Rather yeah. than a hundred kilohertz, it's one kilohertz. Yeah. So say so for the last part of it. Said, so what would you have to do if you wanted a one hundred kilohertz signal? You would do the high pass here. No, I actually answered an exam question where, right? Number one, or let's just not for blue, you know. Want DC low pass, okay? Um, want one frequency band, right? Either I want the band here or I want the band there, right? Select okay, okay. right? Um, want oops let's use yellow here want no dc high right and then uh green here get rid of one frequency notch that's it oh okay thank you so i went beyond that because I, this has shown up on exams that was a great question though all right um i guess that's it for today have a good evening have a great thank week. you professor